So hi everyone, today we have a special guest on our channel. We have Mrigesh with us. So Mrigesh, would you like to introduce yourself once? So hi everyone, uh, I'm Mrigesh Thakur. So uh, I did my B.Tech in Mathematics and Scientific Computing uh, from NIT Hamirpur. And currently I'll be joining Walmart uh, this August. And yeah, so just one thing about me, I am an open source enthusiast. And yeah, so that's something. Nice man, nice. So like he mentioned, he has cracked Walmart and that too off campus. So we'll be getting to know his entire journey to cracking Walmart, everything that happened, the process, his preparation and everything in between. So Mrigesh, would you like to start us off with your interview experience? Like how did you get the opportunity? What all happened after that? So yeah, so like uh, the uh, my particular case and like uh, this, like how I got into Walmart, it's pretty like unorthodox to say and uh, why it's like that is normally when you expect like someone to crack a company they usually go through an interview process uh, they have the test they have uh, the oan stuff and honestly for me none of that happened uh, so what happened was uh, like if you guys might have heard of sparkathon uh, so sparkathon is a annual uh, competition a hackathon that walmart organizes and it so happened like one of my teammates like uh, we created a team and he talked about like there is a, a hackathon and like i said i am an open source enthusiast and i'm also into hackathons very much so we took part and we came first and as an award for coming first of course there were pri uh, prizes but the main thing was that you uh, get an internship summer internship opportunity and that is how like i got into walmart from there Speaking a bit more about uh, the hackathon itself, because, you know, coming first is a pretty big deal. That is something that everyone aspires, right? So can you tell us a bit about how that unfolded? So like for hackathons, uh, I, I'll not, I'll start with the general guidance, like uh, what my experience has been, and then I'll come particularly specific to like Sparkathon. Uh, sure, so sure. Hackathons, one thing I feel is uh, what participants uh, tend to do is, Firstly, they don't recognize like why the organizers are conducting that particular hackathon. Like what it does bring to them. Like if I'm conducting a hackathon, I'm wanting something out of it, right? So what like they want to see, like it's just a game of increasing your probability of getting your uh, project uh, uh, you, uh, into a winning position, right? So first, increased by uh, having a project idea that aligns with the goal of the ha hackathon or what the comp uh, the organizers want second thing that i feel like uh, initially as a beginner a uh, lot of people make mistake i myself have is having a very general idea so let me give you an example let's suppose i go on creating a uh, let's suppose i go on creating a ai agent and i uh, tell it will do x also y also z also now the problem is it is very general solution and it is a very solution uh, very uh, what the solution mm. shows that anyone could have thought about it yeah yes so what you need to target in hackathon specifically is a niche i'll come to our idea like how we ideated it but you need to make it very niche and that niche comes from understanding what the organizers want like let's suppose the case of walmart you first go and see what walmart does what are their pain points? And from their particular problem uh, that uh, for which you build a project. So uh, moving on to that, so that was just a like, general point as I uh, feel for Hackathon. Now moving next specifically to Sparkathon, uh, at my time, uh, there were like uh, four tracks. I don't remember them uh, accurately. So one was ARVR. Uh, another one was related to logistics. Again, because it's Walmart, it is the uh, largest it, uh, so they have something to do logistics. Uh, one I think was related to AI, I'm not pretty sure. And there was another track. So that I am no idea. So what happened was with us, uh, like uh, you can call it a luck or what, uh, the three of us that took part, we were part of uh, XR, uh, XROS, that is a fellowship. Uh, it, it was related to XR, uh, extended reality. That is AR, VR. I'll not go into that. And because of that, all three of us had background in AR, VR. So we thought like, why not uh, go with that? Like, let's target that. And uh, then came the point, like initially we had a very general solution, like uh, 
let's suppose we create a, a AR demo case, something like that, very general solution. And pro- point is that the problem is uh, when you guys like think of ideas, uh, there is an intuitive sense. Like sometimes you feel like it clicks like, yeah, this is a very good idea, right? And otherwise, you know, like it is a very general idea or what. And then we iterate it. And there was one problem that we saw, like, and now I'm coming to what our idea was. Uh, we saw that like when you order goods, like when you order goods from Amazon, Flipkart or anywhere else, the online goods, let's suppose I ordered this chair, right? It has has to be organized. Now, I as a user, that is very good. I can uh, go and watch the video that is there. But the frustration comes like when I'm not able to understand it. So and the point of using AR is like AR VR is really good. But the problem with AR VR is you uh, it's tough to find practical use cases for AR VR, except for like gaming. So uh, what a good aspect of AR VR is, like I can augment uh, the exact chair that is there and I can recreate all the steps that are there. Like, I don't know, like uh, I'll try to share a video, like if you can show that, I'll show that, I'll share it. Uh, so the uh, users would like be able to uh, catch like what I'm seeing. Now, the problem here is uh, like, again, now this is like something interesting we got, right? So this is a good problem statement. Now we see like if there are, we do some research on the idea and see like if there are existing solution. And yes, there are existing solutions. Uh, like if familiar with IKEA, it's not in, uh, I think it is in India, I'm not sure. But in US, it is a major uh, online uh, supplier for uh, this furniture and all. So it sends you and like you have to assemble it. And the idea is they already had something like this, the idea that I talked about. But now comes the point, like I said, like I, uh, the three of us had expertise in AR, VR. Now creating AR, VR, uh, like uh, these um, demos, it's not uh, very easy. So I'll just tell you a process. What is the main hurdle is you first need to code, a, not code, you first need to create a 3D model. And that needs to be done in Blender, right? And Th- that model, then you put in code, like you use, like if you're using uh, web um, uh, AR, then you use JavaScript or else you use Unity. I'll not go in depth. Now, here is like something we figured out as developers, like the problem users will get. Now, suppose I am a uh, Walmart, right? I'm selling my products, it's products like you know, drones, anything that needs assembly. Now, for each product, I need to create a demo for each, uh, not demo, for that 3D model. and. For each model, I need to code that stuff, right? I need to code it. And it would be in the, like the, uh, my UI page. So what we did was we generalized it. So we just created a solution where people can create simple demos, the 3D model that are there, and they just need to upload it. Like uh, I'll share, like when you will see like the solution. And what happens is uh, the code that, uh, to get the AR experience of that demo, it automatically happens. In considered kind of a pipeline that is there. So that is like what the solution was. And uh, honestly, like uh, when you have ne- the next step after this comes, like when you have solution like this is like for hackathons, uh, one thing is like if you have a good idea, that is uh, 60 to 70% of the game is in your favor. Yeah, because for prototyping, you don't need, like you're not a startup, you don't need to create a very, you can uh, fake, not fake, but you can, uh, as the uh, Hindi term is there, you can do, and we did Jugaad, like we did not have the proper pipe. But yes, we did stuff, like we hard coded some things and did all that. And at the end, the concept was there, the idea was there, and uh, the demo came out to be pretty good, the uh, YouTube demo. And that is what that matters in, in the end. Hmm. Right, right, right. That is something I totally agree with. If it's a good idea, ho, then pretty much that will that can take you to the first point of the hackathon, right? So, just say you had this idea, which is pretty great, pretty commendable, by the way, and you guys worked on that. So, did you feel there were any hurdles that you came across, you know, from part, taking part to the winning stage? There were were there any hurdles that anyone might have to look out for? So, one hurdle uh, that particularly came, but it's not like something uh, I can generalize. Uh, For us, like the three of us, we took part, we are from different colleges. So one hurdle was keeping in sync. sync. So it it was not that like uh, someone can lag off, right? So we needed something, uh, have uh, people 
like a uh, three of us in sync like who needs to handle what part and yeah there was, there was some trouble around it but again like as we all are engineers we do everything at the last moment so we rushed for the date that is there and yes uh, like one thing for hackathons i guess is if you have the right team not uh, the uh, right i mean in terms of the tech stack that you need and mostly what i believe is if uh, like while creating teams uh, if you have people you know that uh, they're not going to be a liability uh, liability i mean like all three of you all the team has a synergy that uh, each person knows like what his role is and they work accordingly mm-hmm. Hmm, understood, understood. And like you said, ki you're an open source guy, you know. So pretty much you've had other hackathons experience as well. And Sparkathon, just say you took part in. So did you feel it was similar to other hackathons, or did you feel ki kuch USP or fir kuch unique point tha about this Walmart ka hackathon, or was it like similar to other hackathons only? Uh, so like Sparkathon <clears throat> does has a unique part, like uh in. terms of like you need to think of what walmart wants right the solution that is there mm-hmm. uh other thing is that interestingly like you also uh, like other hackathons uh, you only get prizes but here you also have a opportunity of like getting <laughs> walmart right correct <laughs> yeah rest uh-huh. i think yeah rest is just like <clears throat> uh, luck plays part and rest like hackathons are similar uh, the process is same mm. hackathons correct correct all right all right ओके तो जैसे आपने कहा कि आफ्टर विनिंग यू गाइस वर हैविंग लाइक यू नो द समर इंटर्नशिप अपॉर्चुनिटी एंड देन आफ्टरवर्ड्स फॉर फुल टाइम दे वुड हैव सम इंटरव्यूज राइट सो कैन यू टेल अस अ बिट अबाउट द इंटरव्यूज दैट सब्सिक्वेंटली अकर्ड सो व्हाट हैपन वाज अस फॉर लाइक वी वर थ्री टीम मेंबर्स एंड टू ऑफ अस वर इन आवर थर्ड ईयर एंड वन वाज इन हिज फाइनल ईयर राइट सो द टू ऑफ अस हु वर इन आवर थर्ड ईयर वी डायरेक्टली गॉट uh summer internships and the one who was in his final year year he had a proper st interview uh now coming to like uh, the ppo conversion part like where my intern converted into a full time offer there too again i did not uh, had anything uh, related to dsa because my team was uh, a data science team so yes yeah. so uh, i was in data science team and everything that was asked was around like ml cl- classical ml the stuff that is there so uh, like uh, for data science uh, and uh, data engineering roles uh, firstly like uh, you need to have like fundamentals in statistics that is a must because uh, what i remember uh, was uh, like if you're considering that probability comes as a part of statistics so i was asked few uh, probability questions related to bayes theorem and all uh, one question like uh, i'm just going into like particulars like what was asked one was related to like central limit theorem that is there in statistics other stats question that are there and then uh, like uh, for me uh, because like uh, there are multiple data science teams but as my team worked more on like classical ml so there are like two parts classical ml and uh, deep learning that is the current like gen ai and all that come deep learning so i only had questions related to classical learning and for that like uh, if you guys uh, know about it or not there is a great resource uh, campus x is there uh, in youtube it ha- uh, he has like a, a whole playlist of 130 videos or something so and he covers everything in very depth so that is what i used like uh, i watched all the play, uh, uh, videos that was there so that was my only point of preparation rest like was like the practice i had while working on the projects as a intern and as for questions like in classical ml like if uh, you are considering they ask questions related to l1 l2 regression uh, then something related to sparsity in the same field like uh, then uh, they if needed they sometime ask you like they, they tell you to code particular algorithms let's suppose they will tell you to code linear regression or something like that so yeah that is there all right so i think you have very beautifully explained your sparkathon experience and your interviews as well so on a final note to all of the people who are watching this video who also might want to take a similar way of you know getting through sparkathon into walmart what advice or tips would you like to give them you know on a final note uh, so like uh, for sparkathon again uh, firstly like don't uh, go into it with the perspective that uh, you'll win because that is very tough in a, like a hackathon that takes place on a national level uh, winning like top 3s again it comes to a luck right uh, there can be many factors so firstly i'll say like do the research proper 
uh, see like what uh, currently Walmart is doing, uh, what it is struggling with, and the themes that they have provided. Is there any problem that comes in the theme that they're struggling with? Uh, like let's suppose logistics or anything that is there. And then uh, when you're creating the solution, like in your team, uh, the people that you have, what tick stacks that you have, try to play on your uh, strong points that are there. And yeah, so that is it. And just like uh, then after that, when you have done all the work, just work on PPT and uh, YouTube demo. Like don't mess that up. Like you, if you have done all the work, have them pretty good and within the time limits that are there. All right. So I guess that covers pretty much everything about Mikesh's journey to cracking Walmart. So thanks a lot, Mikesh, for coming on my channel and sharing all of these things. And if anyone, if you still have any doubt, if you want to reach out, then I'll give his LinkedIn in the description. You guys can follow him from there and connect with him from there as well. So yeah, thanks for coming on the channel. And yeah, thank you. So thanks a lot, Ashish.